All right, and we are live. Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. Ian Delina here with uh, Bill Noble and also being joined by Trader, Cro Trader Cobb, Craig Cobb. How are you? Welcome. Good, mate. Thanks for having me. Ian, hi. Awesome. Thanks awesome. for having me on the show. Yeah. Uh, so I think actually this might be one of the more interesting live streams because uh, we have Craig on. Craig is a great guy, great trader, always has a very unique take. What's up, everybody? What's up, Diego? Uh, Seek, Stefan, Dragon Ball Crypto, Rob. Hey, what's up, Rob? Hope you're doing well. What's up, Seek, Rob? All right, so this is going out to all our channels on YouTube, on Periscope, Twitter, Facebook. So if you haven't yet already, be sure to join, subscribe, like, share, invite all your crypto family, all your tokenometrics family. It's gonna be a heck of a show. We'll be going for probably about two hours. We'll have a very deep, uh, intense AMA. With, with, uh, with Bill and, and, and Trader Cobb. What's up, Sully? Hi from London, England. Hi from the UK. Wow, we're global. So the UK, Australia, all over. So let me actually pull up the Mentimeter code. So if you have any questions you'd like to submit during this live stream, just go to menti.com. That's M-E-N-T-I.com. Let me pull that up here. Just give me a second. Go to menti.com, use the code 69576536, that's 69576536 to, to submit any questions you have, right? So our team will go through and answer all those questions during the live stream. And as usual, everything is, is engaging. And if you haven't yet already, be sure to go to tokenmetrics.com and join. We have discounted kind of trials available. For two bucks to five bucks, you can try out tokenmetrics for a week. Very, very cost-effective, especially if you're in crypto, Having crypto investment research, having our team, having Bill, having AI, having just better research makes you a better investor and trader. So be sure to check that out. Okay, all right. So with that being said, let's begin by first doing an intro. So let's begin with our guest, uh, Trader Cobb. So could you give our audience an overview on who you are? Yeah, mate. Um, Craig Cobb, founder of TraderCobb.com. I've, I've been, um, well, I trade crypto. I've done for the last three years full time. Um, and I've been trading for 15 years of my life, stocks, bonds, commodities, FX, you name it. Um, I learned how to do that from some great mentors when I lived in London. I'm in Bondi Beach, Sydney, Australia now. And um, yeah, full, full time on crypto. Simple reason, mate. It's the most volatile market in the world. Uh, as a trader, I, obviously, the first thing you've got to do is manage your risk. But if I can, maybe, if I can risk that much and I'm risking, say, $1,000 per trade, the same in stocks, well, I'm not going to get as much movement. If it's crypto, my upside potential is far greater uh, for profit. So, um, yeah, I started TraderCobb.com, which is a crypto education business for traders, um, specifically, tr you know, focused on traders because that's really all I know. I'm, I'm a trader, simple <laughs> as that. And uh, we've literally uh, on Saturday just launched a brand new platform with a free course there as well. So pretty epic timing for, um, for everybody here. And, um, yeah, I love it. I'm a technical trader. I use checklists. So literally I don't want people to think too much, if that makes sense. It's, once you start thinking, you start adding emotion to things. Um, and most people aren't equipped to deal with that emotion at the very beginning. It's just about ticking boxes. I only have three strategies and they're very straightforward. So yeah, that's me. All right. So let, 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 let's take a step back. Yeah. What was your coming to crypto moment when you first oh, discovered geez. Bitcoin? Yeah. Oh. Tell us about that. Uh, look, I was introduced <laughs> to it in 2013. Um, I didn't get in then. At the time, I was pretty much mostly trading foreign exchange and equities. That was that was sort of the two markets uh, and indices, by the way. Um, but I was like, look, there's you know, for me as a technical trader, so I read charts. Yeah, I'm like, there's 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 no liquidity. There's I, I can't do anything with this. I wasn't a tech entrepreneur or tech um, investor really. I just I was just trading. So I sort of kicked it to the curb. You know, like keep your funny internet money. I'm I'm out of here. Um, and I got into it in 2017 again, in July of 2017, when a mentor, not a trading mentor, just like a business mentor, um, life coachy type person, you know, I uh, said, look, you got to check out this crypto stuff, Cobby. And I went, oh no, what are you, what are you doing here? You know, what, what, what why? I said, All right, I respect this person. I'll go and have a look. And I'm like, wow, it's grown up. It's almost like a 12 year old now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, can, it can talk and communicate and there's stuff that I can do. Uh, and, and from that moment on, I, look, I started investing in July. I, I didn't go big into it. I did pretty well off of that run because I got out. 
Um, and, and yeah, for, it was actually as it was running out through July, I was out there trying to find some more credible people like me, you know, traders, like what information do I need? You know, like, is it non-farm payrolls? Like what's the non-farm payrolls of crypto? There isn't any, you know, what's the, what, what's the GDP? Well, there kind of isn't anything. What, what drives this market? And I went, it, it just seems to be pure speculation. So I could forget all that crap and just have a crack, you know, you use the strategies that I've been using for the last, you know, say probably 10 or 11 years untouched. Now the first four years, I was a shocking trader. Um, but I got good at it by, by persisting and working with the right people. And um, yeah, it just, it's, it's, it's grown, it's matured. I, I couldn't find very many credible people back then. Uh, I know that there are now. Um, and that's really why I started TraderCobb.com was because I thought, you know, bugger it. If, if, if people are charging I me mean, back, back then, you know, they were charging like one or two Bitcoin for, for a course that was just like, the stuff that you, you you start in your first year and then you end up you losing money and going, I, I'm going to have to do something else because this doesn't work. It was just literally people cutting and pasting from Google and going, here's my trading course. And it's like, ouch. So it really pissed me off, to be fair. Um, and I'm sure Bill's probably got a similar sort of feeling on that, that, you know, our business, mate, like of, of trading and being a trading educator, for those that have sort of come down in the, in the bull market, you know, runs, um, it shits me to tears, excuse my French, because you're just like, God, yeah. like, you guys don't know what you're doing. What, 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 just because you've got a following doesn't mean you're, you, you know what you're talking about. I mean, on social media, sure, if you're selling a social media course to show me how to get better followers, hey, I'll buy that. You qualify for that <laughs> one. But for everything else, it's like, why do people put so much faith into people because of their followings? Um, and that for me, it's still a motivating factor um, to try and get this, you know, what we do out to it, to the masses. And we offer more free stuff now to try and help people in. So it's been a big journey, man. And it's certainly, it's certainly, I, I think just begun right place, right time, right skill set. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, cause I've been in this space since 2016 mm. and I've seen so many traders come and go, but one thing that really impressed me was your platform. Cause I ha had a, a chance last year to check it out. And the course was very, very well put together. I think one of the Thanks, most man. professional trading courses out there. And ever since then, I knew, because even though you were still kind of up and coming and you, you, you hadn't blown up yet, I knew this guy was coming, right? So well, welcome on the show. Great to have you here. Now, for those who don't know, uh, Bill, how about doing a quick intro as well on yourself? All right. Uh, so I have, I have a different background uh, as an analyst, uh, as a technical analyst, uh, going all the way back to when I was 18, when Iraq invaded Kuwait. So that's how far I go back. Uh, I was, I made a living being the chart guy in highly volatile markets. So Morgan Stanley turned to me from a startup in the dot-com bu bubble. And I worked for Goldman from 2004 to 2012, uh, where I was kind of the underground newsletter you know, break glass in case of a uh, big problem. And, uh, you know, I had kind of a coming out party in 2008. And then mm -hmm. like Trader Cobb, I got a call from ex Goldman colleagues in 2017. And they're like, hey, Bill, take a look at crypto. And I actually started charting it by hand. And at, at that moment, when I just looked at the charts, I was like, wow, you know, this is really... I finally found what I wanted to do when I grew up, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I got a crypto education uh, with Charlie Shrem. Uh, he, he, I worked with him and then now I'm here with Ian and Tokenmetrics. Awesome, awesome, welcome Bill. And for those who don't know, I'm Ian Bellina. Uh, I come more from, an, from a data, I would say data part of things. So I worked at IBM Watson for four years, working in IBM Watson Analytics uh, and I love big data. So when I joined crypto in 2016, initially it was just more like trying to invest in trade, but trading is not my expertise. That's why we have Bill on, we have Trader Cobb on. I came more from the Moneyball quant side of things of how can we leverage analytics, data, and now even AI to go out there and find winning investments in trades. And with that, I ended up building Tokometrics. I'm the founder and CEO of Tokometrics. Uh, if you haven't yet joined, be sure to join. And with that being said, I think let's hop into the show. Okay, so as mentioned, if you have any questions, go to menti.com. Menti code is 
6957653. Go there to, to put in your questions. Okay, so let's begin with the market update with Bill. All right, yeah, let's get the screen share up here. Okay. Okay, so this market, in some ways, the cure for insomnia when you're talking Bitcoin. So Bitcoin continues to go sideways. It is okay that it's holding above 11,300. My GAN work shows it, you know, that means it's all right. Uh, I think the juicy trader buy using other work would be 11,100. But I'm beginning to think that Bitcoin is the new stable coin. In other words, the world maybe has flipped, ironically. And Bitcoin, rather than being this wild instrument, I mean, that doesn't mean it can't go up or down a lot, but for the moment, it's like a stable coin. Okay, now, Ether. Um, you know, Ether's done this nice little bounce off this area I had at 375. So we're kind of in the middle of a range. So in some ways, as a trading point of view, there's not much to do. Uh, but it, it can uptick itself to 400. It can, if 375 holds. All right. Now, let's talk about something more interesting. Uh, this is our favorite chart, alt market cap. And I'm looking at a three-day chart. Now, one of the things that I've seen before big alt drops uh, is what they call like a shooting star candlestick. That basically means alts go all the way up and then come all the way back down where they started. Uh, that's happened recently and that's happened the last two times. Now, what do I want to see? I actually want to see this pattern not work as an analyst, right? In other words, I want the market to demonstrate some sort of pattern change. And how would it do that? Well, it would do it by holding itself stable, okay? In other words, the last couple of times you've seen these shooting star formations, alts have pretty much turned around and gone straight down, right? Probably led by ether. So I'm looking for a change in behavior. And I actually think, you know, the price action, even though it may not be exciting, Okay, uh, in some ways, dull is better than a trajectory to zero. So that's the market update for this week. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bill. Now let's go to Trader Cobb. What's your update on the market? How do you how do you view Bitcoin? How do you how do you view Ethereum, altcoins, and capital markets? You don't know how stoked I am, Bill, to hear you say what you said. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to speak with somebody who sounds like they know what they're talking about in my eyes. <laughs> Great. I'm so happy. I like, you've got no idea how happy I am just to, to what you're talking about is very similar to what I'm talking about, mate. Um, you know, I'll just bring up my shared screen just here and show you what I'm looking at. Now to talk to Bitcoin, you can all see that, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sweet. Let's, let's go Bitcoin first. Look, I, I, I use slightly different things. And of course, that comes as no shock to anybody that traders do look at things in different ways. Um, for me, I've been, I've been really focusing on the weekly a lot. Uh, for me, I, I just trade trends. So, if, you know, coming back here, I, I did quite well out of a few DeFi projects and was holding it into, uh, into Tether. Went back in at 10,550, 10,150 and 10,050 throughout this fall here. And they've got this little bullish candle right there. So I just use a 10 period moving average, a 20 period in the MACD, and it's pulled right back in beautifully. And it's looking really nice. It's just taking its damn time. Um, look, at the moment, as uh, you know, as he said, Bill, it's, it's, it's pretty bloody boring. And you squirrel down a little bit lower and check this out. Like the, 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 the frustration for me as a trend trader on Bitcoin is that when it's going up, it's going up so quickly. There's not really much for me personally to be trading through here. There's potential through here, but it would have been high risk. And I wasn't at that stage in that high risk, but you know, sort of space. Then it does this. That was all last week. That was Monday when it shot up and then it does nothing. So it's very sideways. Uh, again, I'll, I'll, you know, agree with you that it, it's, it's better than, you know, it's not bad, but it certainly isn't like, yay, it's fantastic. 
The one thing I think it's got going for it is that it did pull back a little bit. I would have liked to have seen it come back into this support level. It's 11-1, rough region, 11-1-1, whatever it is. But it's got that little bullish candle. It's broken the high. It's a little bit of bullishness, but there, there ain't too much there. Ethereum, on the other hand, has got resistance ahead at 394. Realistically, in my eyes, it's 400, a little higher low here. The weekly, although not as, not as clean as Bitcoin's weekly, look, not as clean. It's pulled back into that same region and it's been a really nice uptrend. And finally, there's two things that I can add to, sorry, one, one other chart that I can add to what you said, Bill. Uh, I got long Binance yesterday, just in here. It's my little cradle trade sort of setup. Good convergence, good cyclicity, moving averages in agreement. You know, all those tick boxes for my trading strategies, higher lows. And I am long that right now as that trend is with me. Um, right or wrong, it's a good trade in my eyes. And that's what we've got is probabilities only. Now to talk to Altper, because I think that's really interesting what you're saying is that um, you're talking about the potential that it could fall from there, but you want it to fail. Now I can sort of add a little bit, hopefully to that about why it might fail and cross my toes and fingers. Again, higher, low, higher, low, higher, high, pullback, beautifully in that spot. Good convergence running through here as well. Quick look at that weekly shows us that we are coming out of that zone by breaking the highs of these two last weekly candles. Now that doesn't ensure that we are going to move higher. Not at all. No way in the world. But it does look more bullish than bearish. And if we close something like what we do here in the next hour 40, then a break of that candle could be the point at which we do see uh, alt, perp, uh, sorry, alt perp moving higher as well. So um, yeah, that's that's my analysis and very similar to what you're saying, man. Very similar. That's well done. All right, awesome, Thank awesome. You. So let's let's also do some token matrix analysis. So we just got consensus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, right? So I know one of the major questions, especially to our audience in America, is how do you play Bitcoin and crypto as we approach the US election? So for those who don't know, the US election is on, on, is on the 3rd of November, I believe. Uh, and ironically, looking at our AI models, obviously they aren't perfect. So this is, this is in no way, shape or form financial advice. It's just kind of more giving you an idea of where, based on historical pricing and charts, where our models view Bitcoin going. And check this out. Our models have Bitcoin topping exactly on the 3rd of, no, of uh, November at around 12,600 or so. That's exactly on the date of the US election. So if anything, the models are right now optimistic as we approach the US election, but I think it, that definitely does beg the question, is this a time to buy the rumor, sell the news? So basically once we approach the you know, US election and there's lots of uncertainty, whether Trump or Biden wins, who knows what will happen, whoever wins, our guess is there'll be lots of just social tension post-election. And I think that maybe the motto in a way is kind of picking that up. I'm curious to, 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 to see what our, our team thinks. Bill, what's your take on this? All right, well, you know, I, I had a different track I came up with. Um, we're in crypto and who the president of any one particular country is, is something for what someone on Twitter called the normie world. OK, uh, I, I don't know that. I mean, it matters. Tax policy matters. I can talk about some of the things that I'm looking at. But I was wondering if the pain trade. I don't I don't necessarily always like to use that term, but I'm wondering if now that the market has put everyone to sleep, that the pain trade is for it to go straight up like what the computer model was thinking. And really interesting to see what Trader Cobb is seeing where somebody came in, you know, alts went up, down, and then his candlestick and moving average work said, you know, that there was a, you know, somebody, there's a, there's a floor there. So, or somebody tried to put a floor in. We don't know if it's going to work, right? Mm -hmm. So I wonder with the election, if the it doesn't matter approach is the right approach. So that's my, it's going to be my experiment for the week. Trader Cobb? I think you might need a couple more weeks on that one. <laughs> <laughs> November 3. No, no the tree, it's going to kick up at some point, right? Um, yeah. It's, oh, man, it's, it's so difficult to really get your head around it because it, 
four years ago, that puts us in 2016. Very different market in 2016. Um, very different players, mostly speculators, um, mostly, um, no offense to anybody back there, but less sophistication of the investor market in that space. So how it have reacted back then, I don't know. I think Bitcoin during that period was, I can't remember was going up. I mean, I know that we had 2016, it jumped to a, to a thousand for the first time, right? Um, I think that was 16. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, look, it's, I'm, I'm on the fence with it. I, I don't really know. What well, All I know right now is that you've got to look at supply and demand when it comes to markets. Um, short-term blips, that they're going to happen, right? That's, that's what markets do. Uh, our market at the moment being Bitcoin and crypto seems to be a hell of a lot less erratic, uh, wild and unpredictable than traditional markets, right? And you look at equity markets, holy crap. A, it doesn't make sense by, you know, it doesn't make sense in a market that has enough data for it to make sense. You know what I mean? Like you can, you can either say mm -hmm. that makes sense or that doesn't make sense. That's overvalued or that's undervalued because these are PLCs, they're publicly listed companies. A lot of these companies are so far above valuations or fair value anyway, in my view, that it's, it defies belief. But markets do what markets want. And right now, as we see Square, we see uh, MicroStrategy, we see all these big companies coming in the, there's, there's, there's less Bitcoin available. I, I think I, I genuinely believe that it's going to be a race to the bottom as in who's going to be last to buy Bitcoin as part of their, you know, treasury uh, or their corporate strategy or, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I think that's going to, I think that's going to drive scarcity, whether that sends the market flying off into the stratosphere or not. I think the public's going to do that because you know, no, no one's going to come out and buy $115 million of Bitcoin on market. <laughs> you know, they're going to work yeah. position, they're going to take forever, they're going to OTC it, they're going to be in the ears of the miners, they're going to be probably overpaying for it to get it because Grayscale is sucking up most of the mining coins. Um, but I think that it's going to be very interesting coming towards the election. I think we've got more probability, and this is my, my view, I think we've got a higher probability um, for a move higher than we do for a sharp move lower. But this is crypto. I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. All right. All right. Well, to our audience, tell us what you think. Are you bullish on Bitcoin as we approach the US election? Are you on the sidelines? Tell us what you think down in the comments below. Okay. All right. So now time for the next segment. Let's go to Crypto Showdown. So as mentioned earlier, go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 6957653, that's 6957653. And a crypto showdown, what is the best project in your opinion? Time for our crypto family to go out there and vote. So the options are Helium Network and the other option, Zero X Project. So go, go on Minty, tell us what you think. Also tell us what you think down in the comments below. Uh, Bill, in terms of looking at the charts for both of these projects, uh, tell us your, your, your take. So let's take a look here. Okay, so one of the things I noticed about ZRX is, you know, it's interesting. There was the spike and then it went right back to sort of doing nothing. And it's been in this area for almost a year. Now, you know in, in <clears throat> most of the time you would say, you know, that's pretty boring, okay? However, I get the sense that boring might be good. So from now until the end of the year, looking at stuff that has not necessarily gone up 10X is worth it, right? And I did notice that 0X shows up in one of our value portfolios. So, this isn't a fantastic looking moon chart, but there is support here. So I find ZRX intriguing. Now, Helium, okay, notice I'm, I'm switching timeframes, right? Because Helium is one of these new, you know, it, it's, it's new to being a really fast moving altcoin, okay? So if you follow the mouse, obviously there's this nice move off the bottom uh, it comes back, it does a 62% retracement, okay? You can see a lot of people giving up in here. 
my view on helium is it's, it's approaching an equilibrium. Okay. I don't know that it's ever going to go back to six, but with the way this coin works, dare I say it, but it could become almost a new stable coin or store of value. Right. I know it's been incredibly volatile. So I think from in terms of earning it and having it in a portfolio, it's good if you can earn it. Uh, is it a token that's going to go to six? I'm not sure about that. So I think it's more of a store of value. All right. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, Cobb, any, any comments on Helium or ZRX on your end? Yeah, oh, you I mean, sure? look, all I can really do is sort of comment on what I see on the chart, and I'll start with, with Helium. Um, as far as a tradable chart goes, there's, I mean, I, I believe it's only on the long, it's the long only option. You can't short mm -hmm. this market, which I guess it works in its favor. Um, it's, it doesn't look like it's got that much volume. Um, I don't use a volume indicator, but I can just look at a chart and tell you if there's, you know, I, I can see if there's any volume there or if it's just low sats, if it's against uh, Bitcoin. But this is a 15 minute chart, for example. You'll see that little spec there where nothing happens. That means 15 minutes of either a couple of trades at that same level or just nothing really occurring. So it's, it's very illiquid, which means that it's very uh, pumpable, if that's the right way of the right term to use. Yeah. But, you know, when there's such little, I mean, you see those massive spikes every now and again, and that's not one of them. But, you know, you see these huge spikes sometimes. People go, oh, it's market manipulation. Sometimes it could be, yeah. I think other times it's just somebody coming in with 20 grand trying to buy it. And they hit market order, just take the whole book out. <laughs> and it goes, <laughs> poof, and they go, oh, no. <laughs> they just cook themselves. Um, but it, this hasn't got too many of those wild ones, apart from obviously on listing day over here. Look, in my view, th there's not enough data for me really to analyze too much further than that. Uh, the daily hasn't been around long enough for me to get that. There's no weekly I can really focus on. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that I think it's much better in your position Ian, with uh, with your tokenomics and understanding the fundamentals mm -hmm. of it, for a trader, from my point of view, it's not one that I'm really that yeah. dialed in or interested on. So interested in um, OX has been sideways. Sideways markets are no interest to me, and you can see, as you know, Bill said that big pump. This is a big reason why I'm not. You know, when it comes to Bitcoin or ETH or something, sure, huddle huddle your head off, go for it. But when it comes to alts and whatnot, as a trader, I also invest. I've got two separate portfolios. I take profits, and this is why. You know, we how many times do we see in this market where we see a big pump and then, <laughs> like, I won't say it always comes back, but more times than not, it comes back. So you want to be using these altcoins, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, to harvest. So you might know you want to hold X, Y, and Z longer term. Use the alts to get in, grab yourself some Bitcoin, some ETH, some Tether, whatever it may be, and then come back. It's, it's almost like, you know, being a fish and feeding. You shoot out, you grab your food, you come back in. Um, I like fishing, so hence the analogy on fishing. But there's not much going on right there right now. Weekly pulled back too far daily, very sideways. And um, yeah, probably best to leave it down to the fundamental guys on that one. All right. Uh, thank you, Craig. Yes, I mean, so from my perspective, First of all, disclosure, I still own Helium. I'm still bullish on it, but this is more as a long-term investor. I'm not, I'm not really trading Helium. And I think in terms of pure cryptocurrency projects out there that have fundamental value, Helium is one of those projects. They recently, I believe, just announced they surpassed 10,000 hotspots globally. Uh, they launched in Europe, and then they plan to launch it to Asia next year. So in terms of traction and building a real community, this to me is one of those projects out there that I'm bullish long-term. Now, where can I see this going? Uh, I've mentioned before, I think this could be a top 30 market cap project because if, if you just look at other projects in the top 30 market cap, there's lots of garbage there. And for a project that has a real community from, from the ground up, that's backed by credible companies, credible VCs, Coinbase is looking to list it, uh, Binance added it, and lots of other, pro lots of other partnerships are, are in store. This to me is a project I have in my portfolio long-term. Now, would I trade it? Probably not. But I think if you're mining this, if you have a hotspot, hodl, right? Because as Bill mentioned, during the downturn in the last few months, it's really been acting as a stable coin because it has no other pairs. Every single trading pair on, on every, every exchange is a tether pair, right? So in a way it has no 
direct correlation with Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I think that's why it's really done pretty well during downturns, right? Because I know people on my team who are mining it, like Sam. Sam is basically like 26 years old. He began mining this two months ago and is making two to three grand a month just mining it. And same thing with Ugo on our team uh, down in Dallas. He's making two or three grand a pop. And so, so many people are making money passively mining the, the, the hotspots. So I think when you add on that and the fact that it has just pure, pure tether pairs, this is one of the more resilient altcoins when there's a big correction in the, in the altcoin market. Now, am I saying this, this is going to 100x? Nothing is guaranteed as crypto, right? But I think when the market crashes 40 or 60%, as we saw with DeFi in August, I mean, uh, at the end of August, this was one, one of those coins that did not do that, right? Because there's a big community of hodlers. And as a result, there aren't as many traders. And I think if you, if you have to pick an altcoin that has long-term staying power, I would pick this. Okay, now let's go back to the poll here with the audience. Okay, just give me a second here. All right, so the audience has voted. Uh, the best project in their opinion is 0x. All right, so tell us what you think. Is the audience correct? Is the audience wrong? Tell us down in the comments below. Okay, all right. Moving on to the next question. Okay, so question of the day. Once again, go to menti.com. Code is 6957653. 6957653. So the question of the day is, will Bitcoin rally after the US elections? And we have three options. First option, pump it. Are you long Bitcoin post the US election? Next option, don't know, I'm in stable coins. And the third option, no way, I'm short Bitcoin. So uh, Bill, uh, what's your take? What do you think will happen to Bitcoin post the US election? All right, well, uh, the short answer is, I think it'll go higher. So mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about the election. So the the blue line is you know the betting odds on biden and the red line is the betting odds on trump this is what everyone is looking at and as is classic in markets if everyone is looking at the same thing it's wrong so I'm not looking at this <laughs> okay what i want to look at are two things i found this week okay the top one up here Okay, is a quote from the Federal Reserve telling the Financial Times, look at the last sentence. They want to rethink financial stability in the US. So they want to print trillions of dollars without creating speculative fever. Now, on one hand, you might say, good luck. On the other hand, it's a really interesting statement. Okay, especially when they start talking about things like financial stability. Now, I started to take this quote more seriously when I looked down here on this block and I'm reading the last quote from a firm called Chainalysis that helps look at what goes on on blockchains. And the last sentence is a quote from the attorney general saying that, you know, crypto represents a transformative way to store value, but its risks, including national security threats, must be addressed. Now, the last time I heard Uncle Sam talk about anything related to finance being a national security issue was back in 2009, when the great financial crisis came out and the intelligence community down here entitled its threat assessment, you know, like bad guys, the threat assessment was the global financial crisis at the top. After that, that's when the Federal Reserve started QE, which, you know, equity traders now know and love. But back then we're like, what's QE? What's it going to do? So what am I trying to tell you? Well, if there's a national security threat in crypto, folks, guess what? It's not Bitcoin. It could be the stable coins. OK, or it could be certain exchange behaviors. I don't know. What I what do, do you mean know by that, is Bill? if apologies to, 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 to hop in here, but when you say it could be stable coins and not Bitcoin, could you maybe kind of elaborate on that to sure. our audience? So I think the 
the governments, like if, if there's a coin that represents the dollar, I think the government wants to have control over that coin. So if the government has like a national security beef, it would have a beef over the interest rates that the dollar coin or whatever coin represents. Okay. So here's a, a radical notion for a TV show that Bitcoin is safer than a stable coin. Yes, Bitcoin could go to 7,000 or zero, right? But corporate treasurers are now involved. And as Novogratz said, that's now a movement, okay? When more than one guy does it, it's a movement. It's a classic quote. So the question is, can Bitcoin go up? The answer is yes. Okay, why? Because Bitcoin may be a safer bet from a regulatory view than stable coins. It's exactly the opposite of what you might think normally. All right, very interesting take. Uh, Craig, what's your, what's your take? Do you think Bitcoin could go up post US election? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm bullish, um, I'm, but I'm bullish long term. At the moment, I'm bullish mm -hmm. medium term and I'm also fairly bullish short term. So all of my, well, they all sort of align for me to be bullish. And I'm not doing this based on a, um, I want it to go higher because I do, right? We all do. Yeah. I'm not basing it a buy. That's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not based on just what I want to see happen. Um, but it's based on the data. Like I've, I've made good money shorting Bitcoin because it's just as volatile on the fall as it is on the way up. It's it's money to be made and it's just kind of like, oh, okay, well, if it's going to fall, I... I may as well short it, but I want it to go up. But we can, you know, Bill and I, we don't have to make money either, either direction as long as we're trading, you know, leverage products or futures products or margin products. So, um, yeah, I don't even go high. I think it's interesting what you said, mate, about the stable coins. And I think it comes back just to add to it and to see your theory on it. it it's sort of a, on that power play, right? Because if, if there's going to be, like governments love control. That's, that's what they like. Uh, they want to make sure that they know what we're doing, um, where we're doing it and how we're doing it. And if they don't, then it's a national threat, right? Um, so do you think that they, the stable coins could be not under threat, but uh, a higher risk factor um, because they are like a, you know, a derivative or basically they're, they're, they're stabilized dollars really, but just not the dollar. They're not owned by the government. So that, you know, USDT is Bitfinex, right? And there's a bunch of others out there. USDT is the most popular, of course. And there mm -hmm. is, that's a centralized place. You can go to Bitfinex and you know who those people are. As we saw with BitMEX, they just got um, a bit of a hammering themselves. So is that why you think Bitcoin's a little bit, um, again, I'm, I'm trying to phrase this correctly, uh, safer perhaps, because it's not so easy to go, hey, it's you, you're doing the wrong thing or we want to stop you. Or it's, it's not an individual. Is, is that why, Bill? Yes, right. It, it can be a little bit more, uh, may, maybe the word I should use is mainstream, right? In other words, the Bitcoin maximalists this year, I mean, they were cyberpunks a year or two ago, and now they're going to be speaking at the Square Christmas party. You know what I'm saying? Like those guys have almost gone corporate, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> by, just by news flow, yeah. right? So, you know, they're, they're going to have to go to Brooks Brothers for their wardrobe in terms of, you know, stable <laughs> coins. You know, you, you had you had the G20 come out uh, and, and, and talk about, you know, central bank digital currencies, right? They, the government wants to know, like the government can see everything that happens on the Bitcoin blockchain. So if you onboard to crypto from, the big, from Bitcoin, well, I mean, you, you might as well be doing that in Central Park. They can see that. But if you're going to onboard to crypto with stable coins, you know, that might be something the government takes an issue with. Right. So not a lot of people may look at Bitcoin. I mean, I can come up the argument for Bitcoin is 49 percent of the U.S. electorate one way or the other is going to be unhappy and looking for a constructive rebellion. Well, no better, no better choice than a Coinbase account and some Bitcoin spoken by crypto guy. Right. But. When you talk about regulation and you talk about elections and what governments are going to do, I think the risks lie in stable coins and who controls the interest rate on certain currencies, whether they're digital or fiat. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, so 
there was actually a pretty interesting report or article this week from the DOJ claiming money laundering was used for stable coins uh, with Tether. Actually, yeah. So unsealed DOJ documents say alleged money launderers tried to bribe US officials using Tether. So going back to Bill's earlier, earlier comment of Bitcoin could actually be safer than stable coins. And I feel like all these central banks, they basically see that they could be put out of business, right? There's this entire racket of them just printing money and having control of entire economies could be shackled or hindered by stable coins, right? So, and, and I think that's why when Facebook tried to launch Facebook Libra, they received so much, so much backlash because now they saw that, wow, this is actually coming, not just by some cypherpunks as Bill mentioned, but the biggest, one of the biggest companies in the world, Facebook. And, and now we see Squared hopping into it and now other public companies as well. So I think they see that this movement is coming and they, they wanna make sure that they're still in control, especially from a regulation and compliance perspective. And they know that if crypto were to go mainstream, it's not through Bitcoin so much, but more so stable coins, right? Because if people realize, hey, we can just have a digital version of the dollar that is a lot easier to use, has less friction, and it's not controlled by a central bank or government, that's very powerful. And I think all these central, all these regulators are very concerned about that. And I think that's why there's lots of backlash with that. Um, with that being said, let's go back to our question of the day. So drum rollers, the audience has voted, pump it. <laughs> Most people are long Bitcoin, obviously not really a shocker. <laughs> uh, okay, so tell us what, what you think down in the comments below. The okay. other thing I think just, just on that whole tether and stablecoin mm -hmm. um, conversation is that um, the government's plan have, since the first QE program kicked off in 08, 09, whenever that was, um, that's been their go to. They haven't, they've got no new ideas. There's, there's nothing, and, and the less new ideas that keep happening, I mean, it doesn't take an economics degree to realize that, okay, we keep making more and more and more and more and more dollars. All you have to understand is supply and demand and the fact that the more something is created, the less value that should really have, um, you know, given all things considered at the moment, right? Of course, there's inflation, there's all sorts of different things to come into that to make sure that it is sort of measured and it is okay as the populace grows and blah, 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 blah right? But at the moment, they, they, they still lobby. How, did, did it even stop? I mean, I haven't traded equities for the last three years, really. But it, it just doesn't feel like, it feels like it's more sort of shocking that they're going to stop it. It's like, remember when Trump came out and said, no more quantitative easing? And the markets went, ah! you know, then he went, no, no, the biggest quantitative easing. And the markets went, oh! it's like, right, got it. Okay. So quantitative easing, good. Uh, you know, like, and, and it's like in Australia here, I know people go, oh, like, interest rates are falling that's fantastic no no that's a stimulus project as well that's to help put more money in the pockets of consumers so they go out and they buy stuff it's not what is strong economies do and with more printing of money and lower interest rates it, a lot more people are starting to become privy to the fact that hang on this sort of feels like i'm on a roller coaster that doesn't uh, have any control I, I don't know how to get off this bloody thing I think cryptocurrency is an opportunity for people to get off of that very vicious roller, so, sorry, roller coaster that seems to be going to one destination. It's 150 mile an hour straight into a brick wall at some stage. When does that brick wall come? Well, I don't know, but it does come. It always comes. It will come. History repeats itself always. All right. Uh, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, let's check in with the audience. And guys, guys and girls, if you like the show, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this with your crypto family. Okay, so Lego, my ego says, this goes along with Bill's point. DOJ is going after Tether, and then Tether stablecoin used by drug cartel, money smugglers, DOJ claims. Uh, Jan says, Bill is comedy, gold, legend. <laughs> I could listen to Bill all day. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, lots of people from Australia. Okay, hi from Australia, says Empire. Awesome, awesome. Okay, then uh, what do you think? Because somebody had a question from Trader Com, but I think we, we already answered that. That now was regarding uh, Bitcoin. Okay, all right, let's, uh, let's hop back into the show. So time to now go to the next segment. So time to go to cryptotherapy. 
So crypto therapy, if you have any crypto question that you want to ask Bill and I, obviously not financial advice, but if you're just dying to ask a question, maybe you missed it during the, the live stream, call us toll free, one 90 token That's one 8908 to submit your question. We, we accept calls from the US and international. Be sure to check with your carrier to make sure that there, there are no fees. Okay, so going to the first question, uh, this one, unfortunately, we don't have the sound for, but we have the actual question. So the question from the community is, or, do, or this, cut, this user is, how to avoid losing money in crypto trading? I mean, this is a fundamental question to anybody who's brand new to trading in crypto. So let's have uh, the expert traders. Uh, let's begin with the uh, trader Co uh, Cobb. What's your take? Stop losses. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. If, if you don't want to like the, the way I describe it is if, let's say you're, you, you sell cars, you're a car salesperson, right? You've got a lot, you've got a, you've got a place where, you know, the cars are there. They are parked in the concrete on the concrete there. People come in, you show them around the cars. That's your business. The cars are your liquidity. The cars are your product. If you've got no cars, you have a lot. You have a piece of concrete which is worth nothing to you, all right? So if you're a car salesperson, you better make sure that you've got cars to sell. If you're a trader, your capital is all you have, all right? So, you know, your, your capital is your tickets to play the game. So you've got to make sure the first thing that you look after is that capital, okay? You've got to look after that. Having a plan, so everything I do is it's all about being planned. Like I'm the person you get now, like I'm passionate, I'm emotional, I'm ah, you know, I, I, I love being spontaneous, having a good time. That doesn't work when I'm trading. Can't do it like that. I lost money hand over fist for a long time because of it. Uh, I had to re, um, I guess, remodel myself so that I could be less like that uh, in the markets. And that's why I've got checklists for everything. So you've got to have a trading plan and you've got to have a risk management plan. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is don't trade markets that don't have liquidity to match your portfolio balance. Okay. So if there's a chart that doesn't like, I'm not going to go and trade large numbers on, um, on what did we look at before? Uh, HN, HN, HNT. Brief, HNT. Yeah. Because there's not enough liquidity there. Okay. You've got to learn to understand what markets you can trade without getting slippage. So you might want to get it at 500, but you end up getting stopped out at 450 and you're long, right? So you, you you increase the risk on your positions by the markets that you trade. So you've got to understand that. There's understanding this is the most important thing because without that, no plans are going to work because you'll always justify to yourself why you can or can't or should or shouldn't or you're right or wrong because it's very easy as a trader, especially when you just buy yourself to just go, that one goes underneath the carpet. No one needs to know about that one. Um, and we've all been there. We've all done that. So your, your psychology, and the, again, what I think to be the best way to do that is, is have rules around that, which is if you're not feeling well, don't trade. If you're really tired, don't trade. If you're not feeling positive and, and, and in a strong mental state, don't trade. Because not like if, if you're in a bad position mentally, whether you try to make a profit or try to make a loss, the outcome is bad. Okay? You've got to focus on being good when you're in the best position to be good. Because trading... It's not easy. It should be simple in the way you approach it, um, but it won't be easy. So if you can plan everything out, manage your risk, manage your headspace, manage the market, and risk comes in many different forms, it's going to give you a much, much, much better place. Ultimately, uh, if you want to be a lawyer, you go and learn law. If you want to be a good trader, go and learn from a good trader. Do your research, find the person that actually, you know, not just because they've got lots of followers, but find someone who knows what they're talking about and that fits what you're doing. And, and go and invest some money into yourself. Um, that's that's the ultimate way. It's, it's not an easy path, but it's, it's the path. Yeah, I mean, uh, great points, great, great points there. So I want to ask you one other question. So you mentioned when, when, when trading, don't trade liquid coins. Now, do you have any particular measurements you use, right? So for example, like our team, we use what we call liquidity ratio or turnover ratio, where we take the daily trading volume and the total market cap to kind of gauge how liquid a market is. Do you have any metrics like that or any other metrics you look at in terms of what market is liquid to trade in based on, on your portfolio? 
Yeah. Um, I mean, look, at the end of the day, it comes down to uh, gaps. Uh, and that's why you see, like, if, if I, and here's the, here's the best way to do that in my view again, by the way, if you, if you look at Bitcoin, you go, okay, well, you look at the 15 minute chart, notice how it flows through. There's no, there's no areas where price sort of suddenly stops and then it opens at $20 below. It, it flows through quite nicely. And then let's go ahead and, and look, I've got my watch list here already so that they're already devised into markets that I can, that I can trade more or less. And then if I go down and I know this is an FTX contract, where am I? I'm looking for gold. Where have they got that? They've got that as packs, don't they? Uh, and then look at that. See that? Yeah. yeah. See how it's real wiki? See how it's got lots of periods? You've got to think back to logic. If this is a 15 minute chart, this candle is showing more or less more higher probability than anything else that there probably wasn't any trades at that price at all during that 15 minute or very few. Now, if I'm going to go in and risk, say, $5,000 US on a trade with leverage, with a stop loss, so my position is going to be quite large, I can't do it there. It, I won't get the fill. I won't get the trade on that I want to. It'll just skip straight through my order and I'll be, I'll be screwed. That's why I won't use a market order because I can get screwed anyway. So when you're comparing a chart to a chart, always just go, if you go, oh, I'm not sure about the liquidity, you know, even down here at Kyber, that looks okay, but compare it to Bitcoin, our biggest market cap. See how it just, it's, it's blocky, it flows through. The only gap I can really mm -hmm. see is between here and here. And I'm not talking about a, the future, the CME gap or the ice gap or whatever, whatever. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't care less about that gap, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's just making sure that there's enough um, follow through of market that it's not going to hurt me badly. It's, I don't use a volume indicator. I, I, I read the chart and I, I show people how to do it. It's, it's not complicated, uh, but it does take a bit of practice in getting used to. But if you always come back to Bitcoin, you can see the difference between the two. Yeah. All right. And then, then Bill, any, any thoughts in terms of how people can learn not to lose money trading? Certainly. So the first lesson I would say is, you know, listen to everything that Trader Cobb just said. Okay. Because <laughs> all that talk about, about stops and keeping your head clear is very, very valuable. And it's something you have to learn. So on that note, uh, I would add a couple things. One, um, make sure that when you win, you take profits. Okay. I know in crypto, everyone's looking for one, two, five X, but fortunes are made by buying low and selling too early. Okay. It is okay <laughs> to take money off the table so you can experience the idea of winning. Because if you experience winning, then you'll be more motivated to learn some of the things that you need to know to avoid losing. Now, one of the other things that actually comes from William Gann, uh, don't watch the market all day and in some cases every day. Now, if you have positions, you have stop losses, you have things that you have to pay attention to, of course, but don't stay up all night looking at crypto. Learn to walk away. Now, you might say, well, walk away and do what? Well, how about something constructive like listening to like a guided breathing exercise or take 15 minutes to just focus or rest, right? There's the Calm app that's out there right? Crypto is great. It's really exciting. Okay. But you know, the human nervous system can only take so much, right? Two or three losing trades in a row, walk away, right? Learn how to take care of yourself and you don't have to look at it 24 seven in order to do well. All right. I well said, well said. So from my perspective, I think first of all, Everyone here has had great advice. Actually, I'll kind of go the other way around if that makes sense. <laughs> Just kind of, I guess, play devil's advocate. I feel like you have to lose money to learn, right? It's almost like the cost of tuition, right? Because every good trader or investor, they've all lost money. Like right? nobody has perfect streaks. And I think it's fine to lose money, but as, as Cobb said, you have to make sure you stay in the game. You have to make sure that one loss or a few losses does not retire you forever, right? So figure out how much capital you have to invest, 
don't invest more than you're willing to lose. And everyone says that, but back in 2017, I don't think people actually did that, right? Because if you, if you lose money on a trade and you get angry, then I think you put in way too much than, than you can afford to lose, right? So let's say you have 100 grand to invest in crypto and you put 10 grand into a trade. And at that time you think I'm willing to lose that. But if you're losing night, if you're losing sleep over that, that's that's way too much than that you can afford to lose because it's different for everybody, right? Somebody can maybe only put in one grand and not have to kind of stress about the money they have in crypto or in, in one trade because this is different for everybody. Everyone has a different psyche. Somebody, some people have nerves of steel. So I would say figure out your mental makeup, right? Because for me, my mental makeup, ironically, is I'm not I'm not really a, a trader. That's why I, I I had more interest towards fundamental analysis and more towards using quantitative analytics software to to, to find an edge in investing. Because with me, yes, TA is good, but I like to sleep well at night <laughs> and waking up and seeing the market down and all of that. I think for, with me, just like my curiosity of being an engineer and being in the tech space made me really gravitate more towards playing the game as a VC, right? So I think kind of figure out your mental makeup, uh, only only invest what you're willing to lose and that's different for everybody. Uh, but however, there are pretty standard rules out there. For example, like only put 1% of your portfolio at risk in, uh, per trade. Uh, but understand that losing is part of the game. I mean, even the best players, Michael Jordan or best traders, doesn't matter what skill you're in, you will lose. Just make sure that when you lose, you learn from it, right? Because in my own opinion, I feel like failure is not really failure if you learn from it. Because I mean, I, I would say actually my worst investments or let's say trades have ended up being the best teachers I've ever, ever had, right? So for example, lots of people know that I lost money on Sparkster, right? And if anything, that definitely in a way kind of tarnished my image because back in 2017, 2018, when the ICO was going up and down, I put in probably 100, over 150 grand in, 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 that, in that ICO, it went straight to zero. But the thing is, I was willing to lose that at that time. It may seem ludicrous, but I was willing to lose it. I mean, obviously I would still like to have that money, but not everybody can handle or stomach a big loss like that. So you have to really understand your psychology, right? Whether that means talking to a psychologist or just taking an on online test and just kind of figuring out how, what works best for you. But if anything, losing money on Sparkster or, or, or let's say any trade forced me to get better. It forced me to bring people like Bill on. It forced me to bring people like Paresh on. It forced me to build token metrics to, to now having a team of 20 other experts who are now helping us become better investors and traders. And I think if, if, if I was still just doing those quick flips of taking a shit coin and going 5X, 10X, 20X, 100X, that would not have forced me to go out there and search for better people and, and just learn, right? So if anything, I feel like you really learn from your biggest failures. It's kind of a lesson. It, it basically wakes you up. Right, so that's kind of uh, my take on that. I'm uh, curious to see what our audience has to say as well. Tell us what you think down in the comments below. Okay, all right, let's go on to the next question. Okay, so next question from Crypto Therapy. And this one, we actually do have a voicemail for this. Uh, just give me a second, let me. Let me play this. Let me know if you can hear this. Can you hear that, Bill? No, I cannot. No? Okay, let me, like, let's start that over again. Would like to know, what is your take on XRP? Since uh, in my whole bag of uh, cryptos, you haven't, Nearly at the bottom. <laughs> okay. So basically, Carlos, so it looks like 
XRP army called in <laughs> to ask us our take on XRP. Yes, I mean, so we do have XRP at the bottom. I mean, I mean from a fundamental perspective, it's not really a strong project, but that's obviously our opinion. Uh, we know it's a top five project based on market cap. Uh, but the reason why we don't really rate XRP well uh, or that highly is because it's really centralized. And cryptocurrencies are meant to be decentralized. And the company holds most of the supply. So to us, it's not really a decentralized cryptocurrency, uh, but let's have Bill chime in with that, with TA and see how XRP is doing. And, and while Bill's doing that, okay, go ahead, sorry. Okay, so let's talk Ripple. Now, <clears throat> earlier I, I, I had a, a little bit of a hypothesis that, you know, perhaps, you know, what regulators in the Fed has to say matters more than who any one particular executive holding the White House, right? Okay, now let's flip that around and let's say that's totally wrong, <laughs> right? And one person or another wins and it hits the fan, right? And, you know, legacy markets are going wild, crypto markets are going wild. What would that mean for XRP? Well, I remember from the Bitcoin blow up hearing traders talk about using XRP to move money from one point to the other because of how fast the, the network was, right? So I looked at the XRP chart and I said, okay, well, what's going on here? Well, not much. I've got some diagonal, you know, Fibonacci lines that, I, you know, I find occasionally interesting. I don't know if they apply to Ripple. But I know Ripple is approaching an inflection point. Um, I know that Ripple is making something that might be a base. I drew a head and shoulders. It's not formed yet. So in my mind, it goes like this. If there's a fast-moving crypto market, right, and it's really volatile, and there's no bid for XRP in that environment, in other words, if, if the chart can't turn positive or it can't break out or it just sits there, then you have to really ask yourself, why do I own this, right? In other words, I, I know I, you, know, you may have it, but why do you have it? So people like Ripple for speed. And if there's a need for speed around the election, then it's an opportunity for Ripple to do something. What is it doing now? Well, nothing. So that's how I would, uh, that's how I go through Ripple. All right, uh, Craig, your take on XRP? Yeah, man, I mean, look, uh, look at the end of the day. <laughs> let me uh, let me throw this puppy up here on this weekly chart. Um, I, I hold some XRP because I kind of feel like I have to hold some. And it's because of this, you know what I mean? Like, it's because of the, it, it goes bananas every now and again. Why? Eh, I don't know. I don't care. Um, it's it's a very speculative asset class. Well, as all crypto is, but what I find really interesting is let's go back here to uh, 2017 when we went from like 28 or 25 cents to three dollars or whatever it was. Right, that was an almighty pump. I want that. Um, but after all that time, what have we done? Where are we at? Nowhere. Nowhere. We're, li we're a little bit lower than where we were but before that move occurred. What's it doing? Well, there is a higher low. There is a higher high. It has pulled back. And I did have some higher hopes for it last week. Uh, sorry. In, in, yeah, that no, was last week and the week before. Because we were sort of nearing into this consolidation with these higher lows that were coming up in here. I was like, oh, if we can get up through that nasty sort of 26 level, we might actually see some legs on this thing because it's been pretty lackluster for a long time apart from this one move through here. It's tired, man. It's, it's, it's really tired. It's a great project to short against Bitcoin because as it's been sleepy as and Bitcoin has been slowly grinding, it's put up a very nice run. I'll just show it to you quickly. Many people aren't aware that we can actually short this with margin. Now, I mean, this is, a, this is a daily chart here. So look at this. That's beautiful. That cyclicity there is just you little ripper. Through here, it's been pretty good, but a little bit fast. And through here, there's been some moves. But it's it's this that people have got it for. It's these quick shots up where we're doing nothing. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, go up 40, 50%, you know. 
uh, and it can do that. And I, I use it for that reason. It's to just, if it does do a bit of a pump, get out, change it back over to Bitcoin. You, my, my holdings are mostly of a big wedge of Bitcoin, a little bit of Ethereum at the moment, um, and, and use it to sort of like harvest, I suppose. But as far as it goes in the chat, it, it, there's not much going on that they really need to pull their finger out and give us a little bit more excitement because even the X, when the XRP army is quiet, you know, there's not much going on, right? <laughs> well said, well said. So let, let's also just take a look at here and see what Tokenmetrics has to say about XRP. So looking at uh, the, the models, it has it pretty much going and peaking at around 28 cents then coming back down to where it is. So pretty much not, not nothing too drastic. Uh, so by the end of the month, it's probably gonna be at where it is now. Um, now, I, I, don't, 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 don't get me wrong. I mean, I know it may seem like we don't like XRP, but XRP will always have a place in my heart because it was my first 10X ever in crypto, right? When I got into crypto, we got into XRP when it was under a penny. It was like 0.006. Um, we were actually trading it for some time, then eventually just began to hold it and hold it from three cents all the way to like 36 cents. Uh, but I mean, I know people like Jeremy Gartner who got almost a thousand X return on XRP. <laughs> so I can definitely understand why the XRP army is strong because lots of people made money, like life changing money. So and I think like once you make life changing money, you always love an investment, regardless of what happens afterwards right so for example like me with icon that was my that was one of my first 100x investments hasn't really done much since 2018 however every time i hear icon it has a warm place in my heart <laughs> so i can definitely relate with the xrp army uh, tell us what you think are you bullish on xrp yes or no tell us down in the comments below okay all right let's get back to the the next question Okay, so this is your typical uh, one moon question. <laughs> so the question is, how to turn $10,000 to $100,000 using crypto in the shortest time possible? Okay, so uh, let's, let's begin with Bill. Uh, what's your take on this question? Uh, we can't hear you, Bill, you're on mute. You know, when we get this question, I'm frequently like, you know, step away from the trading screen with your hands in the air, right? <laughs> <laughs> because that that ten thousand dollars is it, it could go away. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, if if the individual who asked the question, if I if I can be courteous and give him some sort of an answer, this is what I would do. I would say, you know, if you insist on being invested, you know, start with Bitcoin or Ethereum so you can learn. Then perhaps in an event surrounding the election, something could occur where you could wind up with an outsized return in one of those assets, right? Very few people talk about a 2X or a 5X in things like Bitcoin or Ethereum. No one talks like that. No one talks about that. Well, that makes me want to talk about it. So do something that will not wreck yourself, that will help your crypto education. And having at least some crypto will give you a chance to make the returns that you need, right? But if you go in and you're like, I need whatever I do in crypto to turn into enough money to purchase something that normally doesn't end well. Yeah, uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, Trader Cobb? Well, DeFi is pretty hot at the moment. So go get yourself a good developer. He'll do it for cheap. Make a bunch of coins. Go and flood it to the market <laughs> and do an exit scam. <laughs> Oh me. man! <laughs> <laughs> you wanted yeah. the fastest possible one, I reckon. That's it. <laughs> yeah, very, very. No, don't do innovative. that. That's a shit thing to do. But yeah, <laughs> I, I, I agree with Bill. But you know, that's 
that's the that, that's the comedy and that's the reality. I mean, how many we're seeing rug balls, we're seeing that DeFi space becoming something what um you know you jumped onto really well in 2017, and which was the ICO boom. And there seems mm-hmm. to have been a DeFi boom. I'm sure that if Bitcoin can just pull its finger out, that DeFi boom is going to get bigger, um, more insane, and um, there'll be more people that will have they will make life changing money, but they'll also lose a lot of money. And it comes back to what Bill said and the whole, I guess, thesis or the, the underlying current of what this whole conversation has been about this far, which is, you know, you've got to, you've got to learn. You, you've got to be educating yourself. Now make mistakes. Fine. That's, that's, you've got to make mistakes, but learn from them. Don't, don't go, Oh, I, I need to pay my bills. So therefore I'll take a big punt. I, I had somebody the other day uh, come onto my chat function on my, on my website and they said, oh, I, I want to, I, I want to turn, oh, that's right, my, my husband's got some form of illness and I need to turn 5,000 into 20,000. What should I do? And I'm so glad that the response from my staff was go back to your hosp- your husband's hospital bed. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you're not, that, that it's only going to make things worse. If, if that's the way you're thinking, there is absolutely no way in the world you're going to make the right decisions. So, you know, Go and chill out for a bit. Go and do his bills. I do breath work all the time, every day. It's a big part of what I do. Um, go and get your head right first because the person that's trying to chase that dragon, man, they end up just getting dusted. And then guess what they go and say? Oh, crypto's, crypto's a ripoff. No one can make money trading. No, you can't. During that period of time, you failed. That doesn't mean the whole market's corrupt. Yeah, I mean, I think carbon and bill solid advice very very solid advice um now i have a very interesting perspective on this uh for, first of all i think if you're trying to turn ten thousand dollars to 100k that is very very hard to do right so you have to really really just understand how how huge that feat is right yes you hear about people doing it in crypto and, and all that stuff but i mean try to have a long-term perspective when it comes to making money and building wealth but with that being said, though, uh, I mean, I've done it myself in crypto. So I feel like in a way I've kind of, I guess, played a part in, in, in that narrative. But you have to understand that sometimes there's luck involved. right? I, I mean, yes, you have to be good at what you're doing, but sometimes you're just in the right place at the right time. So if anything, I would say timing matters, right? Because you could be the best investor or trader in the world, but if you're if you got into crypto during the, the two-year bear market, just not the right time. But if you got into crypto back in end of 2017, when the ICO bubble and Bitcoin bubble was just taking off, timing plays a huge factor. If anything, I would say probably 50% timing and the rest skill. And that part of skill, or I'll just say competence or just research and knowledge is something you have to put in a lot of work. It's not something you can just passively do, right? Because even with me, first of all, when I took about 20K and turned that to over $5 million, half of that was luck, right? And that's something I can publicly say because I got into crypto at the right time, right? So I would say half, half, half of that was luck and the other half was just blood, sweat, and research. I was living and breathing crypto 24 seven. Uh, I'll basically work my job at IBM from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., then from 6 to, to like midnight, sometimes probably even to like 3 a.m., I was just learning crypto. We had different groups of investors worldwide just talking and sharing our research, our knowledge, everything we're learning. So this was kind of like a mastermind group. And we're doing this 24 seven. Like I did, I barely left the house. I was just living, breathing crypto 24 seven. And my, my perspective wasn't so much to like make a million dollars per se, although that was nice. My perspective was I have a good job, but I want to become self-employed. I want to, so I, I gave myself a deadline. I, I told my, this, this was January, 2018, after I came back from vacation in Tokyo, Japan. And I told myself by the end of the year, I'm going to quit my job and just be self-employed. So I then began to burn the ships. So it, there's a famous uh, Spanish explorer, I think it's called, Cortez, he basically burned all the ships and told his troops, either we conquer or we die. And that was the perspective I had when it came to just becoming self-employed. It wasn't really a goal 
that was quantified based on money. It was just a goal of, I want to have enough money where I, I can quit my job and be comfortable. And to get there, I then began to burn the ships. I began to put myself into situations where there was no way out. So I moved out of my place. I had a nice four bedroom place with just me, moved out of there, moved back in with my parents, to, took my car back and I said, you know what? I'm just gonna save all this money, invest this into crypto, basically minimize my expenses while trying to make more money. And I did that. And by September of 2017, I was able to quit my job and go full-time into crypto. Uh, but I think it wasn't so much about the quantified goal, just more about let me just become a maniac and just totally focus at this task at hand. And to me, that was crypto investing because I was an, entre I was an entrepreneur. I was doing lots of other things on the side, but I saw crypto as having the best return in terms of my effort, right? I could work on crypto one day or for a week straight and get a, a 1x, 2x, 5x, 10x, while my other side businesses like Amazon FBA or my video production company, I had to show up to make money. With crypto, I could passively make money investing and trading. So that's kind of my perspective. Yes, it's possible, but understand that half of it is just luck. And the other half is just pure dedication and tunnel vision on the, on the task at hand. All right, with that being said, uh, tell us what you think uh, down in the comments below. Okay, let's check in here with the, uh, with the audience and see how we're doing. Always a latte says Cobb coin incoming. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, okay, people are talking about the success they've had trading crypto. That's great. Admire the hustle. Thank you. All right, let's let's get back to the live stream. Okay, so let's let's find some questions here. Our, our team can answer. Okay, so first question from the AMA. Once again, if you have any questions, go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 6957653. That's 6957653. So first question, can you use token metrics to short, i.e. technical analysis bearish or very bearish and price prediction going down? Yes, yes, you can use token metrics to short. Uh, now, I personally don't, don't really short uh, coins, but if that's something that floats your boat, that is possible. Let me show you how you can do that. So if we just go here to your ratings. So if you're shorting, you I will definitely change the grade to trader grades. Then come here, change the TA and choose bearish and very bearish to add those filters. Right now, there are lots of coins that are very bearish. Uh, and then also find where the price prediction is negative. So I would actually just say that is pretty much your checklist. And then also a coin that has poor fundamentals. So just add a filter and say, let's say fundamentals are below 30. And then I would also add a filter for liquidity. Um, so let's say with trading volume greater than a million daily. Right, so in this case, we're looking at BAT Basically, attention token. Actually, the sorry, the one of the filters is not working. But in general, uh, let me sort this. So, yeah, lots of coins that aren't really so good. Uh, but if we go to the to, to the high cap coins, let me sort this by volume. So we have Bat, Uniswap, Cosmos, V Chain, Hubi token, right? Filecoin. <laughs> that was a recent. Uh, ICF from 2017. And I think at one point it's fully the diluted market cap was close to Bitcoin's market cap. So that one is definitely gonna go down. Now disclosure, I, I'm an, I was an investor in the ICO, um, but our, our tokens are vested. But just looking at that, that's how I would use token metrics to short. Uh, with that being said, uh, how do you guys short? Uh, Cobb? Trend. Um, <clears throat> I make a watch list of markets that I can short that have the liquidity. Um, and I, I just follow the trend. I've got three trading strategies and I, I don't veer from them at all ever. 
Uh, it might seem boring and yeah, it does get boring. Um, and that's why I started a business because I was bored. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Like you sit there yeah. by yourself, you'll go, they go, oh, you know, must have been great. Yeah, it was cool. I, I was, I live at Bondi. I was spear fishing every day. I was going for surfs when the surf was good. I was fishing when the tides were good. I, yeah, I was growing up with, sorry, I was raising my kids. At, well, it was cool, but I wasn't here because imagine spending 10 years of your life by yourself, staring, well, for the most part, by yourself, staring at four computer screens, following three checklists. It, 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 it yeah, money's great, but freaking hell. Yeah. Boring, right? When you get yeah. rid of this shit, it is boring, right? So I wanted to bring people <laughs> together and help other people to do this. So I use those three strategies. I just turn it on its head. It's exactly the same methodology. It's exactly the same perspectives on everything. Um, I just trade trends and where the liquidity is. That's it. Yeah, well said, well said. Oh, man, I mean, I love Bandai Beach. Haven't been there in a while. I want to go back. <laughs> you didn't think uh, of the Bill? Mad here yeah. in you a while back? Yes, yeah, yeah. So went down there with them. We filmed some stuff. Went, 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 went on a boat. Did a shoey. <laughs> For those who don't know what a shoey is, just uh, check online. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have a have a look yeah. on you. You won't miss it. You probably yeah. see Ricardo doing it. Uh, not that he's been on the podium for a while. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Then, Bill, your your take on how to short. All right. So when it comes to using token metrics, a lot of times if you see our models shifting our portfolios into stable coins or even to just Bitcoin and Ethereum, keeping in mind that, you know, it's an altcoin company. So when the artificial intelligence moves into, you know, your dad's crypto on Coinbase, uh, that can be a signal that it may be time to start looking at shorts or hedges for your book. Okay. Now, what I've learned from traders is that frequently in crypto, um, a lot of the guys that make the most money trading from the short side are guys that learn how to sell rallies. Now, I don't have the formula here. I, I, I do like the fact that Trader Cobb has a checklist, right? That's obviously the best way to go if you can establish your own rules. But from my experience, the, the sort of the guys with ice running through their veins, uh, they learn how to short the market and put on hedges when it's going up rather than chasing it when it's going down. Very interesting, very interesting. All right, well, uh, tell us what you think. Uh, anybody out there is shorting the market? Post down in the comments below. Okay, on to the next question. Okay, so here we have two coins, uh, eGold and Zill. Okay, thoughts on eGold, which is, oh, I should know this. That's, that's that blockchain, uh, Elrond and Zillica, best to huddle. Okay, so uh, let's have Bill pull that up on his end from a TA perspective. And I can pull that up here based on uh, our tokenmetrics models here. So in terms of huddle, we'll switch to value investor grade. And let's just pull this up real quick. So Zillica, we rank it 32 based on our on our fundamental analysis, based on, based on everything across the board from technology and fundamentals. While this market cap is 64, so we do think it's undervalued based on its market cap. Then uh, our round is 40, 40th. So we're more bullish on Zill at the moment, uh, long-term as a long-term huddle. Um, then uh, Bill, your take based on the, on the TA. Okay, here it comes. Okay, so when you look at this, I, I don't see a way to divine, to, uh, I'm sorry, discern where the risk and reward is, right? It's pretty tough, okay? So conceptually, let's look at it this way. Here is, you know, a rally up, And then a very choppy consolidation that kind of hurt people. Okay, now here's another rally up. And I'm wondering 
okay, if this is any good. So this, this is this is my post DeFi correction thought process. If this is any good, okay, should be able to switch to a lower time frame and try to find support that matters. Okay. So right now in Zill, it hits support and it bounced. That could be good. Okay. So what's, what's positive about Zill is that it's not something that mooned massively and has a whole bunch of bag holders. It might actually have someone come in and buy it fresh. Okay. And one of the things I think is interesting about this, I just want to do one more thing here is that Zill shows up in the token metrics. This is in our value investor annual portfolio. And the reason I know this is because I've been combing through our value indices, looking for things that may not have mooned and may not have bag holders. So if there's a rush into the market by institutions looking for you know, things that haven't been destroyed, they might find something like Zill. So that was a little bit of a long-winded answer, but that's how I'm looking at that mm. particular coin. All right. Um, thank you, Bill. Then, uh, Cobb? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking at it at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, it's, it's, look at it. For, for me, it, it, it did yeah. get my interest after this, period through here um i mean look don't get me wrong there was a period of time where you know there's a couple there was a trade back here um I, look i didn't take it back then i'll cave it i'll be honest to be straight i didn't take it but no a lot of members did a lot of members killed a pig uh through this run absolutely dominated but the thing i've got is over here you know when we came off of this level or rough it's, it's a very rough level let's, let's be honest it, it's nothing to be really you know, cheered. It's nothing amazing. There's a little bit of support. There was strong divergence on this new lower low. It started to get interesting with this higher low. I'm like, okay, come on, baby. And then it failed me when it didn't break to a new higher high. Uh, as soon as that happened, it's like, okay, well, the the predictability of this market uh, is gone. I just want to give an example. You know, what I'm looking for uh, in a market is this, you know, like, see, as traders, we've got probability. That's all we've got. Like, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. All I've got is my checklist. And that's whole, wholly devised to, to give me the probability of being right more than wrong. And, and these lovely pullbacks. Now, the four hour we've got here, if I just do this quickly to hold it and then go eight, look at this. You know, see how it pull, pulls back into this cradle zone, moves back in, moves back in. That, that's the sort of... That's the market I like to trade. Um, and it's because it just makes it, I mean, visually, even if you don't know what you're doing as a trader and you're brand new and you don't have any strategies and you haven't learned from anybody, you look at this, you can go, oh, okay, well, it seems to move high when it pulls back into here. It's, it's real simple, logical stuff, yeah? The trend gives that probability of further success. And right now you compare what we've got here. So let's go ahead to where we are up to now. And look at that. Chop equates to higher risk, lower outcome, sorry, lower, lower probability outcome. And, and because of that, there's no trend, there's no interest, I'm out. Uh, what was the other one, Elrond? Yeah, let's take a look at that one as well. I haven't looked at this for a long time, got to be honest with you, it was doing pretty bloody well. Uh, and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. they just went, like many do, you know, many go up, 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 when they're, uh, you know, killing it. And then they go splat back down. Now that's a killer candle right there. That's a that's a slippage death candle. Um, if anything, it looks better short to me. Uh, simple reason. There's not a great trend, but that little bearish candle breaking lows. That's the eight hour, the daily. There's not much data here for some reason, bizarrely. Um, it's not on my radar. It's not got that trend. It's not got the liquidity for a trader. Hodl wise, different kettle of fish, not my game your game but neither of those are really uh, any charts that have sort of impressed me at the moment all right uh, bill any comments on Elrond? sure so when you watch this rally right it it rallies in this zigzag fashion which 
you know, as Cobb mentioned, is not optimal for calculating risk reward or for traders, right? And then also when you rally in this zigzag fashion, it begs for the trend to continue. Well, if you look at the short-term chart here, this is actually, you know, just an intraday chart. The trend is down, right? So when you have these kind of retracements, these type of corrections, okay, it's, it, it's sort of like the market begging to go lower again, okay? It's sellers and bag holders getting out. Now, it would be great if this could do something and pop up, but right now, you know, it's stalled. All right, uh, great analysis. So looks like if we had to, to determine our takes long-term, probably Zill is the, is the better option, but tell us what you think. Are you more bullish long-term to Hado Zill or Elrond? Tell us what you think down in the comments below. Okay, all right, let's check in here with our comments. So Jim Fallon is apparently on the stream <laughs> and uh, his comment is, what are your three strategies? So I assume this is for Trader Cobb's checklist. Uh, I think for that, I think you may have to join his course <laughs> to get that three point checklist. Just go get the free stuff, mate. Go. On, there's a free course there. Just go get that. And if it makes sense, do the rest. If not, don't, it's, but it's all there. Okay, then uh, some, so some other questions here. Uh, Ian, do you have any info on the Polkadot Bitcoin project? You're apparently testing just now, wrap Bitcoin on the Polkadot network. Okay, I mean, I haven't looked too much into that, so don't have any comments on that. Um, then question here from Mark, how far down in the coin have you been and not sold? Oh man, uh, depends. I mean, if the coins, I mean, because me personally, the, the the few coins I haven't sold are the ones where I can't even sell. There's no liquid market at all, <laughs> right? So you basically just wrecked. Uh, but I mean, I think in general, sometimes you have to just cut your losses, but it depends on, because for me, it's more as if fundamental investor or long-term investor where the fundamentals fundamentally change and my long-term outlook on that project changes to a point where I think my capital can best be used elsewhere, where I'm willing to just take that loss, uh, whether it's for tax treatment or what have you, right? But for a value investor, yeah, you have to just look at the and see has the company achieved its goals, its roadmap, or has there been any updates that have made you now change your long-term outlook on the project? Uh, Bill, your comments? Okay, so we're answering this question pretty much every week, whether it's our clients or whether it's the live stream. So this question really is, you know, I may have discovered something late in the game, bought the top and it went all the way down. What do I do? That's how I would retranslate the question. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I would say do whatever is necessary to clear your head, right? If that means clear out the position so you're not looking at the red ink anymore, you can always go back in. But if you don't clear your head, the next thing you do will probably be wrong. So how far should you let it go down? Um, we've established that to talk about stops, but not everyone does that. Hence, we have, you know, that's why we keep talking about it. So if you get wrecked, you can't fix the trade, but you can fix yourself. Yeah. Now, one thing, just, 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 just to chime in there, Bill, I think also lots of people in crypto are trading on these small exchanges or these DeFi DEXs where right. some of them don't even have the basic stop <laughs> option. <laughs> so they basically uh, end up pull naked. <laughs> All right. Well, then, I mean, uh, in, I, in, in, uh, in, in cases of these things, I mean, there's also the idea that there's the psych, what I call like the psychological write-off, right? Like if you can't get out, then don't look at it anymore, right? It's gone. And then if it comes back, you know, if, if Lazarus rises, great. Okay. Um, just don't let it wreck your head. Right. Because I, I do understand people are playing on DEXs and I do understand that, you know, if you paid 14 for X ETH and you can't get out when it's a three, that it's a stressful situation. Mm -hmm. Right. But, you know, 
there's got to be a way to manage your head after you lose or after you lose big. Otherwise, how do you learn? How do you come back? You know, how do you have a good human experience when you're not doing crypto? All right, Craig? Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. So plan your trade and trade your plan. If, if, if you don't know what you're going to do before you get in, don't get in. Um, you got to have a plan. If, if you don't, you, and you can't have a plan of, oh, this thing's just going to go a thousand X or a hundred X or five X or up 20 cents. You, you can't, you can't just have a positive look on these things. You're an investor. You've got to be smart. Um, you know, p- before you got into crypto, what were you doing? Were you a professional investor? If so, this is a different market. It acts different. If you're a gardener, this is a different market. Like it's this is its own unique micro uh, cosm of, of of all sorts of interesting things. Technology mixing with markets, mixing with psychology, mixing with very very low market caps. Even Bitcoin's a low market cap. It's tiny. So these things move in ways that you may well if you've not traded before or invested before or even if you have this is the most insane market in the world all right you've got to get some plans in place and for me because I, I do i do invest uh, and I've, I've i've done some good investments and i've done some shitty ones uh my first objective is always to is to get my my risk back you know if i've put let's say twenty thousand us into something and it comes to market and it's worth forty thousand First thing I'm going to do is not just hit market sell and ruin it for everybody and wreck that market, right? I'm going to work that book, work that book, work that book, taking little bits. I might be here till three in the morning, but I'm going to work that book to get my, or at least half of my investment back uh, so that I can rest easy. But I have a plan for it. I know what I'm going to do. Um, if you go into something with full of optimism and no plan B, you know, you, you, you kind of, you got to expect that you're going to cop some pretty severe lessons at some point. Well said, well said. So to our audience, tell us what you think down in the comments below. Okay, so next question. Actually, I'm surprised we haven't covered this until now, until almost two hours in the live stream. Okay, so Filecoin. This was one of the, probably the hottest new trendy projects to launch. Um, so let's look at this from a, TA perspective, beginning with, with Bill. Let me know when you're ready. And disclosure, I do own Filecoin. Just want to put that out there. Okay. So this is uh, this is more than a little interesting, right? Um, when I first put this up, and I first started looking at this, I, I, I had to look at a 15 minute chart, right? And I was looking at this, you know, sort of this 53 area. And you knew this was going to be a problem when, when it came back to what I thought was support. It then became resistance and the sellers didn't even let it get back there. Okay. Now, This does have a feel of people giving up, but I haven't seen that like vicious, you know, every candle is red for three hours yet, right? In other words, if you look at an 89 minute chart or like a, you know, hour and a half, maybe don't get in the way of something that's being sold by people who are smarter than you. There'll be a time and a place if you want to own this. This just doesn't feel like that's it right now. All right. I like it. Nice and short. And then uh, Cobb? Wish I could short it. <laughs> yeah. Nice and uh, simple. I think FTX just brought out a per- Yeah, FTX just brought out a Yes, per- yeah, they did. On it. So I might be able to short it come. Well, I can short it now, but I need more data on it. But yeah, it. it uh, what Bill was saying, I second that. Don't try and catch a falling knife. Yeah. And, and then to, to add on to that, this is textbook what happens with new cryptocurrencies when they launch, especially those that are overhyped that even have great fundamentals and great technology. So as somebody who was an investor in the ICO, even I didn't go all in because I knew my perspective back then was they were, they were raising way too much money at a super high valuation. So if anything, I got in just to say that 
yes, the tech is good. And in case it ends up pumping, right? But I did, did not go in as I would have liked if their valuation was a lot more modest. And I think what happens with almost every project, every good project backed by all the top VCs when it launches, it, it basically has the, the pump for the first week or so because everyone is getting in FOMO, Twitter, Telegram, all these newbie investors are just chasing these good projects, but not really understanding the fundamentals. And I think if you're a value investor looking to accumulate into a good position uh, with a good project, you have to wait until all the FOMO has died down. And in crypto, that could take even up to six months, right? So we've, we've kind of had the same stance on great, great projects launching from Compound to Uniswap. They'll, they'll pump for a week or so because they're the nice, sexy, flashy new token. But after that, people are getting out, people are getting wrecked. Once it gets so boring, no one's talking about it, that's when a value investment will get in and accumulate over a long period of time, right? So if you like the project, be patient, wait it out, wait until nobody's talking about this project and then accumulate. That's, that's, that's our take on that. Okay, uh, tell us what you think. Are you, uh, are you in Falcoin? Are you waiting? Uh, tell us what you think down in the comments below. Okay, all right. How are we doing on time, uh, Trader Cobb? Good? Yep. All set? And Bill? Good? Okay. All right. All right. So looking at uh, okay, let me just find here what we're going to do. OK, so here's a question about building a crypto portfolio. OK, building a crypto portfolio with $1,000 per month, how to start, everything in one coin or $100 into 10 coins. OK, uh, yeah, very, very interesting question. Uh, let's begin with uh, Trader Cobb. How would you build a crypto portfolio if you had one grand each month? Uh, well. I'd probably just do it the safest possible way. Um, and I'd probably just, you know, if, if again, not financial advice, but it's very hard for me to put myself in somebody else's position um, that's starting out because it's been a long time mm -hmm. since I've started out and made those mistakes. Um, but look, the, the best for, for me, when anyone starts, a lot of people talk about doing things. The most important thing is to do four hours spent talking about something or 15 minutes spent doing the 15 minutes spent doing is going to be a hell of a lot better than just talking. So get started. Um, and you want to make sure that you don't overwhelm yourself with shocking experiences. So don't go out and buy an altcoin or don't go out and jump on Twitter and start listening to the, to the Twitterati just carrying on and whatever, whatever. Um, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they've not gone anywhere. All right. They're still there. Um, I'd say that's probably, you know, your best starting point is to go with the highest market caps, you know, maybe 70% Bitcoin, 30% Ethereum, just to start. So you, if it does fall 30%, it's fall 30%, but it may just come back from there. Going and buying something completely random, your first buy, and you might be just pumping money into a dead horse. So you know, I guess ease yourself in unless you know what you want to do. If you say I'm coming into crypto to be a trader, well, then, you know, you need to, you, the, the, the portfolio still needs to be, I would still suggest something the same, but you need to work out how you're going to get to that objective. Um, knowing, having a fair idea of what you want to do is important. Don't just go out there listening to what people have to say uh, straight away because, you know, you, you don't know enough about them in the first place. So do your research and buy big markets. All right. And then Bill? Okay, very much along the same lines, right? Start with what is easy to learn about and understand, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum, okay? Um, if you have money to invest as it comes into the account, just one word, you don't have to put that money to work right that second. You can watch Bitcoin and Ethereum and learn from watching it move, right? Like Cobb said it perfectly. We've said it before on the show. Once your own capital is committed, 
your attention and your ability to focus and learn is it's like a laser beam. So that whole 15 minutes of doing is way better than four hours of talking. Okay. Um, there is the idea of, you know, spreading out from Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, I think you're going to, you're obviously going to need to learn. So when you pick something, you know, that's like the two to 3% of your portfolio max. All right. Um, you know, get reputable research, read things, right? Subscribe to people who know what they're talking about. Don't use social media, right? So there's token metrics. There's the work that Trader Cobb puts out. There's, there's smart people in crypto who are credible, right? Which is different from in the past that you can find research, read and learn. Yeah, and to add on to that, I would say if you if you plan to put in one thousand dollars a month into building a crypto portfolio, also think about investing in yourself. Right? Yes, you can go out there and do everything for free if you have the time. Right? But if you're stuck for time, then as Bill mentioned, find people you resonate with in terms of their their outlook on investing and trading in crypto, whether that's token metrics, whether that's Trader Cobb or anybody out there and be willing to invest in yourself because education is crucial, especially in this market, especially if you're brand new, right? Uh, so that's the advice I would have. Uh, if, if I were to add on to that, I would say, I think building a, port a portfolio based purely on market cap weights is works, right? That's basically as simple as it gets. You just go on coin market cap and just buy based on market cap, right? Uh, but as you kind of get more comfortable, get more advanced, then maybe you can allocate capital in a in a more efficient way, right? So for, for example, with us, with, with our team, we're looking into using the black Litman model, for example, right? That basically builds a, pro, a portfolio or builds our, the, in, the indices based on what's on the efficient frontier. So without getting too technical, it's basically just using mathematics to figure out the optimum way to allocate a portfolio. Now, obviously with token metrics, we, our, our goal is to be able to do all of that and make it very easy for our audience to leverage those indices without, ha without having to be a math or quant expert, right? So definitely recommend just investing in yourself in your education, whether through us, through Trader Cobb or anybody out there that, that you trust. Okay, all right. I like that question. Uh, let's... Uh, Okay, so this question, I haven't heard too much about it. Uh, I, I think I did hear some rumblings on Twitter, but I didn't get a chance to read it. But let's, let me just pull it up. Maybe Bill and Cobb know about it. Okay, so please, any thoughts on the new IMF Brenton Woods moment? How will this affect Bitcoin? Now, I think I did see, I think Rahul Pal on Twitter mentioned something about central banks issuing their own digital currencies. Did, have you guys heard of this, uh, Bill or Cobb? Nope. Yes, as, as I understand it, um, you know, it, there was sort of like a G20 statement saying that they were all interested in, you know, central bank digital currencies. I think they even gave it a little an acronym. Okay. Um, it, it had no impact on the market. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it reflected central bankers willingness to if, like we talked about earlier in the show, get in and basically take control of the stable coin game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So actually I'm pulling up the tweets here from Rahul. Looks like he went on a Twitter rant <laughs> talking about something like that. Uh, okay, wow, look at this. IMF poll on Twitter. In five years, how will you be sending money to a family member abroad? Almost 73% said with a digital currency. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a cash envelope. I mean, grandma's not on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, unfortunately, I, I don't know too much about it, but 
if it's in regards to, let me go back to the question here. I, I have something All here. Right. Oh, you have it? Okay, let's, let's have you share. Okay, so, you know, th th this is a news article um, mm -hmm. where, you know, the, the blue says complete regulatory frameworks that would formalize the use of central bank, of a central bank of digital currencies, right? So this is them telling you that they don't want digital representations of fiat currencies to be determined on the wild, wild west of Uniswap, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, part of me, it's like, I, I don't blame them. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, I, I don't blame them, right? The primary job of government is to protect the people, right? Now, in, in crypto, we have a, a much more free thinking way of approaching finance, right? But governments want to have control of certain things for reasons like protecting people from scams, you know, control interest rates, except right. right. Money, so, money laundering. Yeah. Compliance. Right. right. So, you know, I, I, I'm for the libertarian aspects of crypto, but I, I actually think if governments create something that makes it easier for people to onboard to crypto, uh, the easier it will be for the legacy investors to rationalize coming over to crypto. Yeah, uh, well said, well said. Uh, unfortunately, I also could, could not find that tweet, but to kind of just recap one of what I read, I think what Rahul Powell was also saying is that when all central banks and governments transition to digital currencies, this will reset the entire global financial system in the same manner that Brenton Woods did back in the 70s. And I think that is the case. And Bitcoin and crypto in general, but mainly Bitcoin is positioned to really, I mean, at least hopefully become the world's new reserve currency, but we know that will not be an easy fight because lots of regulators don't want to see Bitcoin win. But uh, that, that's, that poses a good question. Do you think Bitcoin can become the world's reserve currency? Uh, tell us what you think down in the comments below. And just on that. Okay, go ahead. Um, uh -huh. while, while you're there, mate, I mean, any Australian um, uh, viewer or tune in around, <laughs> anyone from Australia who watched uh, a pretty damning report last night about money laundering. So we, we hear about how bad um, cryptocurrency is for it and la, 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 la. Well, our best friend, the man, Peter Schiff. <laughs> Peter Schiff. He is in all sorts of trouble right now. Um, three newspapers got together with 60 Minutes here in Australia to uncover basically a, a horrible, horrible system of uh, money laundering uh, and all sorts of nefarious sort of things. And you can see here, it's all over the news here in Australia. Oh, wow. This guy's getting absolutely smashed. So spread the good word um, mm -hmm. and, and let, let's let people know about Peter Schiff, uh, his bank in, uh, what's it called? Um uh, the place that you know uh, where Brock went for a while, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's in. He's he's being a very naughty boy, and and in in classic Peter Schiff fashion. Have you interviewed him? Uh, no, I haven't. I have, but uh... he's in there. Yeah, <laughs> he's, 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 he's he's really good at in at listening to himself. Um, yeah. So <laughs> nice, a little bit blow back on him. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it, money laundering is still done through the US currency more than anything else. So it's pretty hard to take it seriously when people say, oh, cryptocurrency and all that sort of stuff for the money laundering. I mean, Wait, so so what there. happened in Australia? Money laundering through his broker? His gold uh, broker it's, it's company? His bank. So I, I didn't know he had a it's bank. Um, he is in big trouble. For, he's got a hundred or so uh, Australian clients um, and a bunch of others. Remember, remember the Panama Papers a couple of years back? Or yeah. Yeah. Five, 2015 or feels like a long time ago now. So this is sort of Panama Papers Mark II. Uh, obviously, uh, governments around the world are becoming much more uh, closely uh, interested in tax evasion or avoidance. And this was a joint operation between the US, the UK, Australia, New Zealand. Um, the first, the biggest, the, basically the biggest money laundering and, and uh, tax evasion um, cooperation through multiple governments. And... Pew, Peter's right there in the crosshairs. So 
LB sweating bricks at the moment, as we say here in Australia, <laughs> because um, this isn't just some, you know, report. This is an actual investigation on his Euro Pacific Bank, and he's in big trouble by the look of it. And he, he just he, he thought it was going to be another one of these stroke the ego type, you're an amazing man type conversations. And as soon as he brought as soon as they brought up the bank, it um yeah, it, it went pear shaped pretty quick and he just got up and left. Um, so you know, actions speak louder than his big mouth words. So very interesting time to keep an eye on Peter Schiff. He might be silenced for Twitter soon. Would it happen? <laughs> Would it happen? <laughs> interesting times, huh? Yeah. We'll have to check that out. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. So uh, to our audience, tell us what you think down in the comments below. Is Peter Schiff okay. a jerk? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let me take a look here. Next question. Okay. So here's a question for Craig. Uh, okay. So the question is, uh, Craig, what is your... Or rather, what are your top five cryptos that you're looking at and your top small caps that you're looking at? So basically, what coins are you holding, basically? Yeah, good question. Uh, I hold majority Bitcoin, Ethereum. I hold some XRP. I hold some Stellar, which just seems like, uh, um, at the moment. Um, <laughs> I hold some FTT. Uh, and the reason I hold FTT, which is the FTX native token, is simply because here's an exchange that is providing me what I need to trade the way I trade, which is linked to what is, um, you know, I can, I can manage my risk easy. I can go long and short. They continue to add perpetual contracts to their list. Um, and I just see it being, um, uh, it, it's just a good platform. And I like to support good business. I can see them growing further. I also hold SRM. Uh, a caveat to that is that that's all like I've done, did very well out of SRM when it first launched. I hold a bit of that still, um, but it's, you know, it's kind of a set and forget type position. It's, it's not a huge one. I've, I've taken my profit from that and bought more Bitcoin. But as far as what I'm actually looking at, like it's for, for me, it's, it's, I don't depend on myself to make these decisions and apart from markets that I understand. I do hold, hold Binance as well, by the way. I, I hold, if I'm going to make a, have a theory about a market, it's usually through the people that are experts in their field, like, you know, people that know what they're looking for and why they're looking for it. When it comes to actually what I will hold, it's more down to trading than anything else. Uh, majority, like when I say majority, I'm talking, I'd be probably uh, 80, not, probably 90% in Bitcoin at the moment, maybe, you know, 8% in Ethereum and little bits in the others. But what I'm looking at is chart based. You know, this is for shorting Theta or however you say that. Uh, this looks pretty good on the, th was it three day? Yeah, a little, little bullish candle in there. If that holds, that's a good trend. Uh, ZRA, oh, we were speaking about that. Monero. Oh, sheesh. Actually, 11 o'clock. Yeah, that. Um, oh. uh, what do we got? Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, one second. I like Monero. It's got a beautiful bullish candle right there in that cradle in the trend. It's a little bit messy, the trend, but I'm, I, I like the look of Monero at the moment as well. Um, it, for me, it's, it's all about reading charts. Less. Yeah. Um, now, more, I find this interesting. So you said you're also shorting that? Basically, I'm waiting token? for a short, yeah. Waiting for a short? Okay, interesting. Yeah, because yeah, we actually just covered it. The trend, look. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like the AI is on the same page with, with Craig <laughs> with the short on that. <laughs> all right, so... Look, anything else on your end, Craig, before we go to bed? Oh, not really, mate. It, like I say, it, it's, it's, okay. it's very much, you know, I stick to what I'm good at. I'm, I'm a yeah. trader. So I, um, okay. I, I tend to try and harvest things back into things that make sense. Um, Bitcoin makes sense to me long-term. I'm looking to build wealth long-term. A lot of people want to get rich overnight. Um, I've tried that before and I fail every time. So it's just about building wealth over time. And look, if I get a good market move and it happens quickly, hey, beauty. But that's that's not what I'm chasing. I'm chasing a, a long-term sustainable future and and massive wealth from it, but over time. Well said, well said. And then Bill, what coins are you currently holding? You want to share with the, sure. the Tokenmetrics family? So uh, I, I've got more Ether than Bitcoin at the moment, right? Just because mm -hmm. um, 
It's because I think that, 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 that if there's a, a 2.0 catalyst, I want to be there for that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think in terms of alts, um, I, I like this idea. I, you know, I found some decent support in some of these coins like Chainlink, Cosmos, this whole idea of, you know, what's the new QQQ? <laughs> what's the new tech stock? Well, it might be a digital asset or a cryptocurrency that has technology that, because um, if you think about what Chainlink is worth or what Cosmos is worth versus what, say, a NASDAQ stock is worth, it's, it's just not even close, right? So I, I've also looked at things like um, EOS and Tezos. Okay, the the idea there is to find something that has not mooned, right? They're just sort of like punts, right? So that's not exactly discipline stuff. That's like really small percentages of the portfolio. Just on this idea that, you know, on the election, if people come in looking for different blockchains or different forms of money, okay, uh, those could be two interesting plays. So they're they're like themes, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other trades. That's all chart based. The stuff I just gave you, that's in the very small percentage of the book that would be like the punt book, if you will. All right. Oh, thank you, Bill. Now, in terms of what I'm currently holding, nothing has really changed. So in my long-term portfolio, I have Ethereum, very bullish on that, everyone knows that, uh, Helium Network, Matic Network, uh, Uniswap, I still have that, I haven't sold anything since uh, I, I got those uh, airdrops. Um, what else? Uh, in my trading portfolio, I had Reserve Currency and Synthetics. Uh, actually, I was yield farming with those. And a few other coins, uh, there, there was Aloff, that was mainly an airdrop I got from a different investment that ended up kind of doing kind of like not quite an acquisition, but it was one of those things where they just took the community from a different project by just giving them airdrops. So those are the main ones that come to mind. I, I still have some Chromia as well. Um, and I think that might be it. But we, we for our full li list of our team's portfolios, just go to tokenmetrics.com slash disclosures. All right, and tell us what you are holding down in the comments below. Okay, all right, next question. Uh, okay, so here's one, one other question for our guest of the hour. Okay, so question for Trader Cobb. What percentage do you set your stop loss at when trading crypto? Uh, very good question. Uh, there's no fixed percentage. The chart tells me the level. Um, just to give a, I guess, probably a, I can give a visual on that to give you a better understanding mm -hmm. of what I mean. Let's go with Monero Bitcoin, as I just showed before. Let's theoretically or hypothetically say that I'm going to enter as it breaks the high of that candle. All right. Um, what I'm looking at here is I'm looking to capture momentum. And this could, I'm hoping that this will become a higher low in what is an uptrend, just like this was a higher low, a bit messy through here higher low here. So naturally logic would suggest that my stock should go underneath that higher low right there like that. Because what I'm hoping for it to do is that it goes higher. I'll scale out at one to one. So let's say I risk a thousand bucks. If it hits a thousand bucks in profit, I'll sell 500 on break even. Now I can leave my stock where it be, sorry, where it should be rather than going, Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll have a full checklist and go through all this technical now and knowledge and know how, um, and then just throw it up here. Why? Because, it means I can't lose any money, but there's no reason to be there, right? So I'll have my stop where it should be underneath the higher low in an uptrend, underneath the lower high in a downtrend. And, and that goes for all strategies bar one. So there's the cradle, the breakout, and the Fibonacci that I use. Um, the fibs uh, are always set based on the Fibonacci points. So hard to go into more detail than that, but to show you something very, very simple, I tend to follow higher lows in an uptrend, lower highs in a downtrend. The same goes for trailing stop losses to lock in profit. Again, it's 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 not a difficult 
um, concept to grasp once you learn how to do it. And it, it, it is incredibly easy. All right. Awesome. And then Bill, your takes in, on stop losses. Okay. Well, there, there's not, there's not a lot to add to what Craig said in terms of how to, how to do all the things that he just described. What I would add, since we are in the altcoin business, um, you know, if you're going to play in an altcoin and it's difficult to define risk, um, either because the chart isn't as clean as the chart just shown, or because maybe there's not enough history, maybe you're only working off a 15 minute chart. I can't see a rationale for risking more than 2% of an overall portfolio for a short term trade, right? In other words, this whole idea that I've got $1,000 to play in crypto or however much it is, and I'm going to put it all into one particular idea, that doesn't work. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think for the method, you know, you go to trader, tradercob.com, right? <laughs> in, in, intellectually or psychologically, you know, the percentage that you put into any one speculative altcoin is a lot smaller than you think. Okay, so actually a good segue to the next question. I find I'm always getting stopped out in my trades and then the price recovers. What is the best advice for not getting stopped out by large wicks and trading crypto? Uh, Cobb? Talk on this one. <laughs> okay, this question, see it all the time. <sighs> People say, I don't use stop losses because I get stopped out. That's not the stop losses fault. Okay. It'd be like saying, I, I, I'm jumping on a trampoline, but I keep going higher. It's really frustrating. Mm -hmm. Get off the trampoline. You know, if you don't, if you're not comfortable with that environment, don't be in that environment. So to, without being, without it coming across in any sort of uh, condescending way, it's not the stop losses fault. It's your fault. Okay. The person that has the stop loss hit all the time is obviously not getting it right because it, 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 you've got to remember that being a successful investor or trader is not just about direction you know how many times do you hear people go oh i told you this would happen might be two years later yep good for you brother like yeah i tell you one day the s p will eventually be higher than what it is right now probably will at some point in time might have to wait 10 years to know but you'll eventually be right if you have no plan you, you've got to have more than just a I think it's going to go up there for I'll just wait until it does, right? It's about the timing of your entry and where that stop loss goes. A lot of people have their stop losses too close, too tight, and they get stopped out often. When they get stopped out often, they start having their stop loss where they say it's conservative. It's not conservative at all. It's, it, it's the trade that decides and dictates to you where your stop should go because if you've got a good risk management plan, like, and if you scale out like I do, so like I say, I'll, if I hit my first target, I'll take some off the table. That way I can let the thing run without, with a very clear head. I've got no concerns. I've done the right thing and I'm, I'm good to go. Now I don't do it on every trade, I'll be, I'll be honest. But most of them I do and that's what I teach. Um, if you're getting stopped out a lot, it's because you need to put more time into finding a method that works with a higher probability of you not getting stopped out. So win-loss ratio is one thing and too many people focus on that. Reward risk ratio and win loss ratio comes together, create a plan when you've got risk management involved. There's a lot more to trading than just buying and selling. Um, and, and if your stops are getting hit quite frequently, um, you've, what, what you have pointed out is that you have to improve. And that's a good thing. Take that on board and go get it. All right, that's perfect, perfect advice. Anything to add on to that, uh, Bill? Uh, you know what? Sometimes you just have to leave the perfect answer be the perfect answer. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. All right. Awesome. So tell us what you think uh, down below. Okay. So, yeah. So I think we've been, we've been going on for a while. I think it's time for us to kind of bring everything back home and, uh, and wrap up. So with that being said, uh, let's begin with our guest of the hour, our Trader Cobb. Any last advice to our crypto family out there, to the tokenmetrics family out there? Anything, any, any last words of wisdom? Yeah, it's been a really hard year. Um, a lot of people are going through a lot of tough mental situations. It's really important to be friendly. 
all right? Jumping online and abusing somebody, it's not a good thing to do. Um, these people have feelings. These people will get hurt. Um, call your friends. Check that they're okay. Call your mom. Call your dad. Call your grandmother. Call your cousins. Call people. Say, are you okay? Have, have that open dialogue. Uh, if you're not okay, get the help. Call your friends. It, it's okay to not be okay. Speak to people. Be involved in the, in the health of our community. And it starts with your own self and your own friends. That's the only bit of advice that I've got. I think people need to be more nice to each other, look after each other. Um, and if you want to learn more about trading, then like I say, we've got the brand new course. It's, it's I've literally, it, it's it's all brand spanking new. So be patient if it's not working properly. Go to tradercob.com. It, it's it's free as a bird, but more importantly, look after um, look after your friends and family. Well said, well said. Yeah, I, I mean, so to our audience, we're always getting the question of, hey, where can we learn how to trade, right? I mean, obviously we have our channel, but if you, I think having diversity and opinion from people who are qualified, like Bill and Cobb as well, right? So definitely recommend go check out his content, his channel, subscribe, and tell him we sent you. <laughs> and then, yeah. uh, Bill, any last words of wisdom to our Tokenmetrics family? All right. Well, following on what Craig said, uh, we have hashtag crypto family, and we don't just say it, we mean it. Uh, in this world, the situation, uh, it's very easy to get disconnected from other people, from the world that's at large, and even from yourself. So, Hadi, can we help you solve this problem? Well, I remember when I went to crypto conventions and I knew nothing, and I would say hello to people, and just because I was interested in crypto, they were interested in being my friend. Crypto is a great place to make new friends. And if it's a scary world and you can make new friends and possibly learn something and possibly empower yourself with some economic freedom, try crypto, make a crypto friend. Awesome, love it, love it. So my final words are, we're now in Q4 of the year, right? Fourth quarter, crunch time, right? So, but also look forward into next year, right? Begin prepping for next year right now. Whether that whether you want to go full-time into crypto, don't just wait on it, plan it out now. Or whether you want to begin your own business in crypto or what have you, whatever goals you have for next year, begin thinking about them now and make sure that by the time you segue into 2021, you're ready. Right? Because uh, as mentioned in the, in the beginning of the show, we're basically, going to enter a whole new world. We're, we're already in a post-pandemic world, but we could be having a new president here in the US. Uh, how is that going to affect you? Whether you're an investor or trader, it doesn't matter what your politics are, but look ahead and try to kind of have a plan A and a plan B, right? So for me, for example, I'm in the process of looking to move, right? I'm not waiting for next year. Um, I've, I've been kind of going to Florida. Now I'm currently in Texas. Uh, I might be going to New York as well, right? I would just say, take the time to plan ahead, right? Earlier, Trader Cobb said, when it comes to trading, always have a plan. Well, when it comes to your life, always have a plan. And I think that's fared me well. I think it's fared everyone here as well. As well. Always have a plan with your life. And as usual, we enjoy having you here every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern time on a Tokenmetrics Roundtable and live stream, Crypto Family. And as we like to say, the moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Thank Be sure you. to like, subscribe, and share the stream with your friend. Get the word out there. Crypto is here to stay.